Well, Gran, let's see if we can put this plan of yours into action, eh? My plan? Were you the one who said we could move stuff around and have an actual party in here? Are you planning on holding a wake for Valerius or something? Ah, uh, no. Oh, right. Uh, where'd the kennel go? The others let me know they're on their way. Weird magic things? Hey, weird magic book. Not like the kind Gramps had. You write in one? And whatever's written shows up in the other. I see. Arden? Yep. Right. Kina was on the roof, I think. You talk to her, I'll start moving stuff around. Ah, right. Don't get too crazy. Don't want your back to yell at you later, eh? Oh, it yells at me enough just swinging the halberd around. Werewolf or not, 60 winters is 60 winters. And I saw that mark a few winters ago now. Oof. Don't hurt yourself, Gran. I'll be back. Behold, behold the light of man, the blinding dawn, the bloody hand. Let all who would against me stand, beware, beware the light of man. With heart of thorn and seething fire, with blade of steel and scorn. A white flash on the battlefield, a shadow bathed in war. Look on me, the soldier cried, and see what you have wrought. Your kings have fallen by the hand that Father Time forgot. And may you ever rot. Behold, behold the light of man, the blinding dawn, the bloody hand, a scourge upon the hard land. Beware, beware the light of man. The gale turns east, a cold wind blows upon the land of fire. The king of ash and all his men march out with voice and dire. Thunder drums, the red rain comes, but never breaking through. The king upon his final breath says, I'll remember you. And I'll return anew. Behold, behold, the light of man, the blinding dawn, the bloody hand who fought until the bitter end. Beware, beware the light of man. In a storm the dragon came, and by the sword a king was made, who with a voice the north obeyed, the lands of men did tame. Torn by eight and made by nine, hard and made by father time, upon the land a white gold shine, the dragon's battle sign. The heart and breaks and twine. Behold, behold the light of man, the voice of thunder, shadow grand, whose name is known across the land. Beware, beware. Behold, behold the light of man, the blinding dawn, the bloody hand. Let all who would against me stand. Beware, beware. The light of man. You scared me! <laughs> Sorry about that. I didn't want to make too much noise because that was gorgeous. Is that the whole song? I think so. I keep thinking I should add in a fourth verse, but I'm not sure I want to overcomplicate it. I like it. So, uh, how are you doing? I think I'll be alright. I can't tell if the worst of it is worn off or if I'm just numb right now. Music is helping. I didn't know him for long, but I don't know. He left an impression on me. Whether or not he was mad or whatever, he was the kind of person I'd like to be. Oh? And what's that? Kind-ish. Kind, usually. Capable when necessary. He was just... himself. And I'm... 
I am so many legends piled onto one title. Ismir. I'm Yer Kinoa al Marzim, writer of songs and slayer of dragons. Chaser of skirts, if not for the fact that you don't seem to do much chasing. <laughs> and you're more good blade master, healer of wounds, flame of the north. I, I don't know, I'm not good with epithets. Flame of the north? Because you're in Skyrim, but you're from... I have no idea. I gave it a shot, but alas. I am indeed. Alas. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, had to. So, uh, I heard from the boys. And they test. Oh? Where have they been? Winterhold, I assume? Uh, not exactly. Are you alright with company right now? Only if it's them. What happened to you? I know you're a vampire and everything, but you look like death. More so than usual. As it happens, I was more dead than usual. It's a long story and a hard one for me to tell, so if y'all could just listen for a while and be patient with me. Oh, of course. Take your time. Hey, I think this is the most any of us have heard you talk already. <laughs> You're probably right. And I apologize for being so distant. It's one of the ways I've kept... Hmm. One of the ways I thought I kept myself safe over the years. Keeping people at arm's length. Yeah, kind of hard to do when you can barely lift your arm, eh? You can't... Alright, who do we have to... You don't have to do anything to anyone. Rest assured, that much is taken care of. Just let the man speak. Thanks. Thanks. Now, I realize there's strength in numbers and all, but that only works if the numbers are actually on your side. And I've been afraid of trusting any of you with any of my story. Particularly with the war going on and the layers of threat hanging over everyone's heads. I was going to tell Arden some of it when things calmed down. But things didn't calm down, did they? Not for you. No. The reason we didn't meet you in Whiterun. A Thalmor Inquisitor found me. And I panicked. And ran. And I shouldn't have. But at the time, all I could think was that staying would mean explaining to all of you why a Thalmor Inquisitor was after me. I was afraid of the worst case scenario. I didn't have the space or quiet in my mind to think of the best. And what is the best case scenario? You all accept who I was and let me move on with my life a little lighter. I did take some time to think about my decisions while I was in hiding. And frankly, I would trust everyone in this room with my life, up to and including Inigo. If I think about it without letting the fear get in the way, none of you, except Dom, maybe, have ever given me reason not to trust you. Arden was the one I was worried about hurting the most, and he came after me when I ran. I think any of us would have if we'd known you were in trouble. That's probably true, but it's the why that made me nervous. I used to be enemy number one in Tamriel. I'm not anymore. And I feel I need to make that very clear before I say anything else. I'm on your side. I'm not one of them, even though they trained me. I'm a deserter from the Albemary Scout Corps in Woodharth, Valenwood. I was a Thalmor, but not by choice. Pardon how this is going to sound, but what do you mean, not by choice? It's... You remember how I mentioned that thing about kids getting taken away if they show promise? I heard a lot about Valenwood from Feral, and I don't know if that was her deal too, but... I know she hated the Thalmor even before the House of Troubles. What happened there, by the way? Ah, uh, Thalmor. Once much like Erendil, if Korst was correct. 
I don't really want to talk about it. Got it. Aye. So, I know bad, Thalmor. And now I know what an Inquisitor working undercover acts like. I'm sorry I didn't say anything or anything. I knew it was Hegatha when we talked in Markarth, but I didn't want to scare you. Point is, I know the Thalmor, and you, my friend, are not one of them. Thanks. You're right, love. Nobody is angry. Now hold on, I'm plenty angry, just not at you. I'm angry at this Hegatha lady that tracked you down, and at those high elf bastards for taking you away from your family in the first place. I always thought you could take it as a kind of twisted compliment. They knew you'd be strong enough to oppose them eventually, so they had to control you. Yeah. And they did a damn good job of it. Thank you, everyone. I... I'm sorry I didn't trust you. I don't blame you. It's hard to trust anyone when you've escaped from a situation like that. That's an understatement. It's not impossible, but... It requires a level of honesty I very rarely had with myself. Hey, while we're on the subject of honesty, are you gonna tell us why you're holding your arm like that? Oh, you know, he just took a silver dagger to the shoulder. And nearly bled out. Oh. Sorry. Are you alright? <laughs> uh, no. But I've had worse. How? Do you really want to know the answer to that question? Actually, no. Would you like me to take a look at it? I know my spells won't help, but mine do, to a certain point. Getting him fed properly helped. As far as I've been able to tell, there's nothing we can do but wait and see how quickly he recovers. Ouch. But that means you won't be able to use the bowl for a while. And that's why I'm taking him up to Winterhold with me so we can oversee what's going on up there. I've got an actual professional working on it and not just some nerdy artist with a half-working understanding of geometry and weight distribution. By some nerdy artist, you mean... myself. Yes. You're adorable. Well, I'm not gonna let you two wander up into the frozen north without someone watching your backsides. Uh, not... <laughs> I mean, your backs, the side that your backs fa- You know what I mean. I'll come with you. Block some of the arrows if you happen to find some action on the way. Eh, uh, you sure you want to do that, Gran? I mean, there's still plenty to be done around here. And I'm an old lady with an angry back that doesn't need to do any more lifting than is necessary for swinging the halberd around. You're doing alright, Yarnveda. You're not usually one to complain about your age. Eh, yeah, it's funny coming from you. No, I'm fine. Just kind of worn out by everything that's happened around here. I think we all are, but I've never been good at comforting grieving people. And there's a lot of that going around. Oh, Morgood mentioned something about that. Well, I can hardly blame you for wanting a bit of fresh air, so to speak. What about you, Kinoa? I'll be fine. I... I don't know. I just want to stay here for a while and... <laughs> lift stuff that isn't the weight of the world. Rebuild something for once. Uh-huh. I think I'll stay with you. I saw those guards when we were coming in, and her archery needs so much work. <laughs> you noticed that too, did you? Who was training them? I think the Red Guard woman had the best form that I saw. That'll be coursed. The other reason I want to get out of here for a while. I'm sick to my eyes of arguing with you. I think I'll stick around for a while too, if that's alright. I imagine Kinoa isn't the only one having a hard time with the recent loss. Hey, there's a lot of that going around. A lot of people who probably just need someone to talk to for a while. Yeah. Alright, sounds like a plan. Which, I think I said last time and then things went completely pear-shaped, but maybe this time things will be a bit smoother. Are you feeling up to travelling again today, hon? Probably should. Get up to Winterhold before I sleep for a month solid. Need something for the pain before we head out? Marcus had a bunch of mead. Uh, no. No, thanks, but... I think I'd rather be sober from here on out. It's gonna suck while my arm heals, but I'd rather... Not. I'd rather not. Uh, does... That... 
Even we're called vampires? Counterintuitively, yes. Yeah, this is gonna be a bitch, but let's head out before the numbness wears off. Numbness? Nerve damage. I've seen it happen before. At some point, my arm will start feeling like it's burning while it heals. Or freezing. I'd rather not be here when that happens. Yeah, let's get out of here then. Come on, you two as well. Hmm. Toodles, Sparky. And Igrath? I'm proud of you already. You'll be alright. Thanks, Dom. We'll catch up. Alright, we'll be back. Hold down the fort, Kinoa. You know it. Travel safe. You didn't tell me you were going to be working on the actual town, too. I wasn't away for that long, was I? <laughs> when your crew is mostly mages, things get done quickly. I suppose that's a good point. How much do I owe you for this? Oh, don't be silly, Ardenius. This was a gesture of good faith to the Arl. And a solution to having a whole crew out here, but no room for them and the students and staff from the college. Oh, of course, I should have thought of that. Not just housing for the crew, but also, you know. I have been wanting to do the town a favor after the incident with the anomalies. You also disappeared after you gave him your plans. I assume you must have been busy with something else. Too many projects on your plate again? Again. No, I was... Trying to keep a colleague from getting into trouble. You know you don't have to hide that from me. Your partner. What was... Cayman, right? How is he? He's... Arden. Your man's asleep. Figured we'd come tell you before we... Who's this? Ah, uh, oh boy. Uh, Jan Vida. This is Sigwin Van, Master Restorationist and a highly proficient armorer. Siggy, this is Jan Vida. Harbinger of the Companions, and her granddaughter, Mordgood. Pleased to meet you, Siggy. Oh, you're Mordgood. And Yarnvida. Ah, and what brings you to Winterhold? An injured Bosmer. Your name sounds familiar. Have we met? I might have mentioned her in passing. She's one of my friends from back at the College of Whispers. Oh, that's why you know us. You and Darden and Lothir all knew each other, huh? Guilty as charged, I'm afraid. I understand you two left on a somewhat bitter note. Wait. Sigwin. You're the person he was writing to from the college. Uh, look, Janvira, you're old enough to be my daughter. Probably. And you might be happy to note that we did, in fact, find a way to help him. What? What's that supposed to mean? Mara, save me. Janvira, did you ever bother to ask your husband why he was writing to a young and talented restorationist from the College of Whispers? Something about hearing voices in his head, maybe? How would- No, of course I didn't ask him. That's his business. But you knew my name. Of course! He talked about writing to you. What was wrong with him? Ooh, Gran, that's not the direction I expected you to take. Eh, it was my fault he left, and I've gotten over myself a bit. I think I'd rather understand the full story now. Well, the good news is, there was nothing wrong with him. It was the book. Yeah, he talked about you two trekking around Soul Slime and finding a weird black book in... Ben... Konig something. Ben Kongrika. I remember. And that's the one he gave to Neloth, right? Great gods, Grand. Memory like a bear trap. Much to your grandfather's chagrin, I assure you. No? He didn't give it to Neloth. Isn't that the wizard at Telmithrin? That's him. And no, Lopdeer brought that book with him when he came to Cyrodiil. He still has it. Wait. That means there's more than one. Aye, Gran. There's more than one. What do you mean? Gran, I have one. I haven't bothered to look at it or try to read it, because when you open the damn things, it takes you to this weird place where everything's green and the walls are made of books. Apocrypha. Emmaus Mora's realm. You didn't try to read that damn thing, did you? No, none of us did. Onkano thought about it, but we convinced him not to. Well, Lobdir convinced him not to. And that's how we heard about you. And the fight you two had, and everything. 
I just know about Apocrypha because I studied Daedric Princes as part of our work on transcribing old alien... Mm, sorry, rambling. I see. Hermaeus Mora has a hand in this, then? Or a tentacle? Ugh. Thanks. I've not looked at this book since I picked it up, and I'm certainly not going to revisit it now. Probably for the best. How did you fix the voices? We didn't. He got far enough away from Soul Slime that the voice couldn't reach him anymore. Did that voice have a name, by chance? Oh, yes. Yes, it did. Mirak. My idiot husband woke up in ancient evil and hasn't, to my knowledge, found a way to put it back again. That's the real reason I kicked him out. Yes. And we did our best to help him find a solution to that, but... Shore's beard. I wasn't certain I'd ever see you again. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, now, look. Yadvita, I was going to tell... You weren't going to tell me anything, Arden. Don't lie to my face. You're looking... <laughs> older? Grayer? Bit like you've seen Oblivion in person and live to tell about it? Yes, I know. Sorry, lass. Eh, don't you last me, Lothir. You haven't been back to the village since I kicked you out. You haven't been back to Solstheim, as far as I know. That book you pulled out of Benkongrek awoke something up, and now it's like the whole island is cursed. Aye. I feared that was the case. <sighs> Do you at least have any idea how to stop it? I don't have a clue. Unfortunately, we couldn't find any records of the traitor or Mirak in our searching. Aside from what you probably already know, being a skull and everything. And we did look into that. It was sort of our side project where we did actual assignments and whatnot. Oh. I think I might have some ideas. Oh, because of the book, or because... Sure's bones. Again? Hi, Gramps. I found a book. But I've also had Mirak in my head. It wasn't for very long, but while he was along for the ride, so to speak, I killed the dragon. And he sort of... ate it? It was a weird feeling, but then I think he could sense Kenoa in the area and knew she was dragonborn, so, like, I don't know, maybe that scared him off? It was a while ago and I don't remember the details, but I think... I think that whole cursed thing might have just gotten worse because the dragons came back. And maybe it's because he's been doing what Kenoa's been doing and eating them for their power or whatever. No, it... it can't be. Uh, it can. But I suppose that means there might be hope, right? Kinoa destroyed Alduin. If there aren't enough dragons to go around, she might be able to stop him. Oh, like, outcompete him for dragon souls or something. Aye. Maybe that's why he was so interested. Kinoa. As in the dragonborn Kinoa. You've made some interesting friends, Ardenius. <laughs> of course, your name is. Shush. Yes. I have, and yes, the very same. So, in theory, Alduin's destruction might mean the curse on your home has been lifted? That might be the case. Have you heard any whisperings from the beyond lately? Nope, nothing out of the usual anyway. There's only one way to find out if what the last says is true. Go to Soul Same and find out? Aye. Be careful, lass. This is the last place in Skyrim I'd ever want to send you. It's not technically Skyrim, it's Morrowind, and you're not sending anyone anywhere. Oh, excuse me, milady. Ah, <laughs> uh, you haven't changed a bit, have you? He truly hasn't. Uh, well, as much as I'd like to visit home again, we're not going anywhere without Kinoa. Why not? Are you kidding me? I'm not going back to a place haunted by an ancient evil spirit who might be dragonborn without also having a dragonborn of our own with us. Hey, that's a fair point. I would offer to come with you, but I'll be busy here. For a few reasons. Sounds about right. We'll deal with Soul Slime if and when we get to it. And in the meantime... Uh... Can I stick around and help out, Gran? I haven't ever gotten to spend time with Gramps and, you know, commiserating over the whole Voices and Heads thing. I promise I won't get in the way. I'm pretty strong. I can help lift stuff. Reliable and strong? Colour me impressed, lass. All right, might as well. You're not the cheating bastard I thought you were, locked here. I'll allow it. Glad to see you finally came to your senses. Now don't get ahead of yourself. That doesn't mean I forgive you for soul sign. I'm still angry about that. But she's your granddaughter too. And we've all got too much work to do to be standing around beating dead horkers. 
I'll be down in Helgen if anyone needs me. Don't get into too much trouble, we bairn. I'll behave myself. Be safe, Gran. Want me to check on Cayman before I leave? If you would. I do need to check in, see how progress is going, pay people, see if anyone needs help. I probably won't be long, but just in case. We'll do our best not to keep you, Ardenius. Thanks. Obviously I'll be in the area, so if you need me, you know where to find me. Alright. Have fun, you lot. Don't break anything important. Same to you. Until next we meet, lass. <sighs> Don't lass me, old bastard. <laughs> well, that went better than I expected. No kidding. I'm amazed she didn't just pull the halberd on you and tell you to get lost. Aye. She's as stubborn as she is beautiful, isn't she? Stubborn, certainly. Come on, we've got a college to renovate. You okay? I... Ah. Hey, what's wrong? Oh, Tony. Happy Oh, sorry. Uh... Managraxis? Go on. Angua has a graxi regal. Oh, here. There we are. How does that feel? Better? Yeah, thanks. What was that sound? Uh, what sound? The one that woke me up. The big thud. Shit, that was in my head, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I think so. I didn't hear anything, but then again I wasn't really paying attention. You've been on high alert for so long, I honestly don't blame you. It'll take some time to get used to being peaceful again. Again, he says, as though I've had a moment's peace in my life until now. <laughs> Come here. You'll be alright, love. We'll work through this. I know. I'll heal. It'll just be a bitch while I do. Do you mean your arm or your heart? You know, I don't know. I'm broken in so many places it hurts to think about. I want to be okay, but I don't want to give up that fear. That caution, not fear. It's what's kept me alive this whole time, even though I know I don't need it all the time. I don't need it right now. What are you afraid of, love? Getting hurt. Getting killed. Losing you, or Z, or any of the others, honestly. I'm still afraid of Hegatha, even though she's dead. I'm afraid of the Thalmor, of being helpless and fragile and out of control. I'm afraid of being interrupted. Of having our time taken from us. I just want to rest, and yet... Easy. You're all right. You told me once that you have trust issues. I didn't really realize you meant the whole of Nerd and not just me. <laughs> I, I'm not sure I trust myself either. I've talked about having to reclaim myself and... I think I'm still working on that. Sorting out which parts of me are actually me and which parts I built up to survive. I mean, those are sort of... Equally valid parts of you, right? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I understand any of this, but I'll keep asking questions until I do. One of the many reasons why I love you. In a way, you're right, but... The parts of me that I created to survive don't necessarily have to be there. They're like armor. Some of them weigh me down, and 
The problem is, I'm not used to not carrying all that weight. Even now that I have someone around for a while to help me lift it. Oh, hun. I hope I'll be around for a long while yet. We have time, provided we don't do too many stupid things. <laughs> oh, we both live dangerous lives and I know how you feel. Yeah. <laughs> Are you purring, love? Maybe. That's... <laughs> You know, now that I think about it, I do sort of know how you feel. I walked around Skyrim, and Cyrodiil actually, in great, bulky, usually massively oversized armor because I was afraid of getting hurt or killed or I guess looked at funny for being so skinny in my case. I don't think the great bulky armor actually helped that impression any, but... Uh, no. It did not. You really are just a big cat, aren't you? A big cat with Atlas sometimes. I'm fucking weird. I don't know what an oblivion I am. An alien for one thing. Mine for another. My Ingrath Rulani. I could get used to that. Hearing you say it feels a bit like home. Not sure how to explain. Are you going to be Ingrath Rulani then? No pressure, obviously. I'm just endlessly curious and get excited thinking about you and your many faces. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe it'll be a good way to get my name back. Uh, associated with something other than tragedy and Thalmor bullshit. Would you ever consider going back to Valenwood? Only if I had you with me. I'd love to show you my home. Let you make drawings of it, suss out all the little details that got lost through the generations. That might be nice. Have you ever been to Coral? I have, but not with you. The tree was beautiful last time I saw it. Well, maybe. When the college is finished and you're in traveling condition again. Maybe we can take a break from all this madness and go to Cyrodiil for a while. I'd love to show you Coral from the eyes of someone who grew up there. Maybe... Maybe we can see my parents. Oh. That sounds... I think I'd like that. <laughs>